you know, the stigma of prepping in one part, I suppose it's, it's a program thing, you know, it's all a part of the same agenda that doesn't want you to be able to take care of yourself and meet your own needs so that you need to be dependent upon the government and the powers that be and all its various institutions and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, this part of the stigma of prepping is a program thing. It's, you know, they want you to appear crazy. So, you know, you're, you're ridiculed and you have to keep it secret and, you know, it's going to impact your social life and stuff like that. So you basically become a social outcast for thinking for yourself. And that's what they want. They don't want uh, it to catch on in any significant way. Because it really is a form of independent thinking. Even the, the, the stockpiling prepper who just stockpiles and stockpiles, it still is... As much as it, some people would say it supports the market, it still does sort of run contrary to the idea of, you know, sort of buying into the system entirely. And it doesn't matter what political background you're coming from. If you are a prepper, if you are preparing to be self-sufficient in the case of an SHTF, you are mistrusting of the government on some level, and they don't like that. So they put out a lot of propaganda to demonize preppers. That's one aspect to it. There's another aspect to it that associates it with the uh, conspiracy-minded paranoia, you know. And of course, we live in a over-medicated society as is, where every every minute deviation from the norm is attempted to be medicated by the big pharmaceutical profiteers. And so, you know, anxiety and uh, any sort of fear, paranoia is viewed in the negative. It's viewed as something to be avoided, even though fear is a natural part of our being. You know, it's there for a reason. We're supposed to be somewhat distrusting of of you know, uh, just the world, the environment in general, you know, we're not supposed to just blindly accept what we're told, especially from, you know, uh, two or three media agencies that uh, run the world, essentially, to provide the news for the world. We're not supposed to think like that. You're supposed to think for yourself and formulate your own opinions. That is the essence of freedom and individuality and uh, the whole not even necessarily libertarian, but the, the whole principles upon which the American Constitution was founded was freedom of thought and just freedom in general. You're supposed to use it. They don't want you to use it. Prepping is, you know, it, the conspiracy theorists, theorists and the preppers are lumped into the same basket because they are both outside of society to some extent. You don't have to be a hippie to be outside society. In fact, I'd say uh, hippies and rednecks, quote-unquote, have a lot more in common with each other than they do the yuppies in between. Even though they're diametrically opposed politically. You see, they both realize that the system is not working in their best interests and that it wants them to conform to something that they deep down know they shouldn't be conforming to. Now this is not intended to be a political rant. I want to keep the topic focused on the stigma of prepping and I suppose the best way you can combat it is by leading a, you know, continuing to be a productive quote-unquote member of society you know, like myself, you know, I, I work, uh, like most preppers I know, we work regular jobs. Um, you know, another thing you can do is uh, stay active, stay fit. You know, don't let yourself uh, go, you know, uh, 
don't let yourself uh, get spoiled and you know start not taking care of yourself in certain ways because people see that and of course you know what people think is none of our business but at the same time you know if you're not taking care of yourself and person sees you stockpiling guns and hanging up the don't tread on me flag and stuff like that you know we don't need to be so uh, overt about our about our intentions and stuff like that we don't need to you know if we're coming off as slobs and just sort of uh, hoarders and you know we don't want to be coming off as that either the best thing you can do is you know represent this whole preparedness movement with uh, some you know just uh, some sophistication that's one thing I, I, I like about Urban Prepper, and I, I know, you know, some people think he's kind of just a bit of a, a gearhead, and, you know, how he kind of talks about pretty basic concept, concepts and perhaps too much detail for, for some people's liking, but uh, one thing I'll say about Urban Prepper is that he presents his material in a way that he doesn't open himself up to ridicule from the masses because he tries to make it practical but you know he also you know I mean the guy has a bug out bag a three day bug out bag and in it he's got everything which basically has doomsday written all over it but he's presenting it in such a way that you know isn't going to open him up to a whole lot of ridicule maybe it's part of his personality or something I don't know but I'm just saying that, you know, there's a certain way to talk about this stuff and present this stuff in a way that's non-radical that would really do well to minimize the stigma. A lot of these shows like Doomsday Preppers, you know, say what you want about these guys too. Um, I mean, yeah, some of them have gone to great lengths, you know, to prepare. But you have to understand the the way it's not really so much what they're doing it's how it's portrayed like take for instance the guy who had the castle there's a guy uh, i can't remember it was season three or maybe early, uh, season two perhaps but anyways this guy he's got like nine kids and he has this castle in the woods that he's building it wasn't built at the time of the show uh did their filming there but he had intended to finish this and i don't know if he's finished it yet or not but he had a full, full-on castle in the woods, and you know a lot of people were talking about how crazy that was. But I mean, which prepper among us would turn down a castle in the woods? You know, I mean, we don't get to see his sort of process of thinking about how he he sort of got to that point. You know, it it looks crazy in the sense that you know it looks a little excessive when you only see the end result but you know you don't see how he sort of slowly sort of worked his way up to that and you know perhaps the scenario that he's preparing for is a little far-fetched you know a full regress to medieval sort of uh, mode of interaction but you know i just uh i think that it's I don't necessarily think those people are, are, are crazy as we say they are. It's just that they're depicted as such. They're just normal preppers who've, you know, gone over and above and who've perhaps been doing this for so long that they've become so advanced in what they're doing and perhaps they have put, invested way too much into it. You know, perhaps it has become a obsession to a point of uh, that it is potentially a form of mental illness. That is possible. But I don't think in a lot of cases that it is. You know, I think it's justified, uh, as justified as all these people who are buying these half a million dollar homes who they're spending the exact same amount of money as these people, only it's money that's not theirs, and they're not getting anything long-lasting for their investment. Especially if you buy a home nowadays, I mean, you gotta consider the the property taxes on that. I mean, that's just gonna you never really own anything anymore. Like the only I just watched a Jimmy Rance video and he's talking about you know the RV and and how it's uh, <clears throat> how it's a great way to to sort of maintain your freedom because and it's really the only way to be free. 
the nomadic way. Just get an RV and, you know, uh, go from place to place. Obviously, you know, you can't raise a family like that. But, uh, you know, if you're retired and, you know, or if your kids are growing up or whatever, that might be, that might be an option for you. So I think a lot of this stigma stuff is due to one part, the perception that preppers are paranoid, conspiracy theorists, and on the other hand, uh, the programming, you know, the the constant uh, bombardment of propaganda about how preppers are extremists and their, you know, their uh, liabilities, they're crazy, you know, gun nuts who are, you know, potentially uh, terrorists, domestic terrorists and all this bullshit, you know. And the craziest people of all are the ones who write the laws because they're the ones who aren't prepared for a damn thing. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, thanks for watching.